All right, in the last video, we covered uh, series circuits and the rules around those. If you remember uh, this fancy sheet right here, we had our rules for series circuits. We defined a series circuit as a circuit having only one path for current to flow. We kind of broke down voltage, where that comes from. We uh, revisited our variables named uh, voltage a couple different ways. So now let's go ahead and work a circuit uh, mathematically. Uh, I know this looks uh, maybe a little super complicated at first, but I promise you that it's not. Uh, it's just adding and subtracting. So um, we're given this circuit here, and anytime you see a voltage uh, by the battery, we can assume that that is going to be E sub T. All right, and uh, R sub one, R sub two, R sub three are the three resistors we have in series, and each of those has uh, 10 ohms of resistance, right? And so all of them have the same resistance here. Uh, we're generally going to use a grid to kind of keep everything straight and keep our bookkeeping nice and neat. And so we have a rows, a row for all of the totals. We can have total voltage, total current, total resistance, and total power dissipated. And then we have roll rows for each individual resistor. And so those will have a voltage drop across them, uh, a current flowing through them, uh, each of them will have a resistance and then each of them individually will have a power dissipated at the resistor. And so this is a pretty common circuit uh, that we see and the uh, first one it says find the total current flowing through the circuit. And the second one says find the voltage drop across R1, R2, and R3. And thirdly it says find the total power dissipated by the circuit. And by the end of uh, this video, we should be able to do all of those pretty easily. The first step to solving any circuit, and this is what I always tell students, is to identify the circuit. Now, this one's been identified for you, but if we remember our definition for a series circuit, it's that a series circuit has one path for current to flow. And so when we only see one path for current to flow, we are using those series rules. And the series rules I'm referring to are these rules right here. All right. So this is a series circuit. Step one is done. So step one is identify the type of circuit. All right, and then step two is going to be find the total resistance. Now, the questions we're asked do not explicitly ask for that, but this is the step that has to take place in order for us to answer these questions up here. And so we're going to revert back to our rules for series circuits. And if we look back, we see that RT is equal to R1 plus R2 plus R3, so on and so forth, for the number of resistors we have in the circuit. And so in this case, we have three resistors, R1, R2, and R3. And we just need to add all three of these together to get our RT. Now we have this uh, information up here. We have 12 volts is ET, R1 is 10 ohms, R2 is 10 ohms, and R3 is 10 ohms. Let's go ahead and populate that, and then we can do the addition. So ET is 12 volts, and we know that because it's uh, located by the battery. Uh, R1 is 10 ohms, and so we can write that in. Again, always want to put our units so we can uh, remember what in the world we're writing down so that when we come back to it later, we can say, oh, okay, that was ohms I was dealing with there. R2 is also 10 ohms, and 3 is 10 ohms as well. And so because it's a series circuit, now we can just add all those up, and we see that total resistance is 30 ohms. And that's pretty easy. So. If we were to write an equation for this, find the total resistance, we would have said RT equals R1 plus R2 plus R3, and that equals, now we plug in all of our values, 10 ohms plus 10 ohms plus 10 ohms, and that is going to get us to a total RT or a resistance total of 30 ohms. Pretty simple, right? Um, 
At this point, step three, we're typically going to be able to find the other two values. So the good thing here is that if we have, we have a total of one, two, three, four variables that we're typically dealing with. And once we get two of them, we can find the other two. All right. Um, remember from Ohm's law, and I'm just going to write Ohm's law over here on the side, Ohm's law tells us that the voltage is equal to the current times the resistance. All right. And so dealing with that, we can just rewrite it down here for usability. Now we have E sub T, so we can plug that in for E. Let's go ahead and do that here. Uh, 12 volts. Okay, and all I did was I took our value for E sub T and I plugged it in for E, right? I, we don't know what I is yet, it's blank, so we're just gonna leave that as I. But we do have our total resistance. And so uh, let's go ahead and plug that in. So it's gonna be times 30 ohms. And if we isolate I by itself, we're gonna divide by 30 on both sides just to cancel everything out. And whatever we do to one side, we have to do to the other. And so this is gonna cancel. And that leaves us with I <coughs> is equal to 12 volts divided by 30 ohms. All right, and if we punch that into the calculator, it's 12 divided by 30. That's going to give us, give us 0 0.4 amps. And so current's always going to be given in amps. So 0 0.4 amps is our answer. So we can just write that right there. All right, power uh, is going to be given by Watt's law. And let's rewrite that here just for us to remember. And so Watt's law says that the power is the current times the voltage, okay? And so our fourth one here is going to be, uh, we can write P equals I times E, and then start plugging in our known components here. We don't know what P is, so let's go ahead and just write that as P. We'll find that here in a minute. And then I, well, I is 0 0.4 amps. And E is 12 volts. All right, and you can see that I have left units with the numbers, um, and I've written everything out. It's very good to do this so that we don't get lost. We're going to get into a little bit more complicated uh, math as we move along and ensuring that we keep our bookkeeping nice and square so that we understand what we're doing is going to be key. Sometimes you'll have so many numbers on the page that you'll kind of get lost uh, and distracted. So it's very important to write neatly, uh, lay everything out so that you know what you're doing. Uh, and now we can just multiply 0.4 times 12. So I already have 0.4 in the calculator times 12 and that's going to give us 4.8, and that's 4.8 watts. So P is equal to 4.8 watts. And we can just put that right there under our totals. So total power dissipated is 4.8 watts.